Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Kulecha and I welcome you to this channel. Uh, in this uh, video, I am continuing my uh, learnings on Dhammapada verses and uh, now in this video, I will be covering the verses 121 to 140. Uh, I am using for my reading of the verses, I am using this book, The Dhammapada by Ikhat, Ik Iknath Iswaran. This is a very, very good book and uh, you can purchase it. It's available on Amazon and other places mm -hmm. online. So you can purchase this. Uh, so let me start uh, the uh, the reading. Uh, if you want to see all the, there is a Dhammapada playlist. Uh, you can go in playlists on this channel and there will be uh, uh, all the uh, videos on Dhammapada learnings that uh, will be available. Every video I try to cap capture like 20 verses. Right. So let us start uh, now uh, in this 121 onwards, it's about evil, right? It's about evil. Buddha, Buddha is talking about evil. Buddha says, 120, verse number 121, Let no one think lightly of evil and say to himself, Sorrow will not, will not come to me. Little by little, a person becomes evil as a pot is filled by drops of water. So the Buddha, importantly, see, in Dhammapada is all about... Uh, Buddha's guidance to lay people in the way that the lay people understand things. So this like entire Dhammapada is filled with analogies, right? So here also you see the analogy is a, a pot getting filled by, by water drop by drop. So drop by drop, drop by drop, we do the small, small uh, wrong actions. They make us evil. So and don't think that sorrow will not come. Buddha's entire teaching is based upon the law of karma, right? Entire teaching. It's basically what you sow, you shall reap. What you sow, you shall reap. It is cardinal law. It's above all the gods also. This law operates in a completely impersonal manner. So don't think that today if we do an evil act or even an evil thought, there will be no consequence. No, there will be a consequence. And the consequence, only the time when that consequence will manifest may differ, right? So, little by little a person becomes evil. So, we need to keep our, even the minute, minutest of violations that we make, we need to be mindful of that. Our conduct, our actions, our speech, right? All those things. What we consume through, not only through our food, but also through our eyes, ears and all the sense organs. Verse 122 is related to 121, where Buddha says, Let no one think lightly of good and say to himself, Joy will not come to me. Little by little, a person becomes good as a pot is filled by drops of water. So Buddha is again giving hope also here, that if you do a good act, don't think that if you do a small good act, a random act of kindness, nothing will happen. These slow acts, small by small, they build up and the pot will fill up, get filled up of joy and merit. Right? So, do not, again, going back to the verses 116, Buddha says, hasten to do good, refrain from evil. That means, be slow in evil, refrain, refrain from evil and be quick in doing the good. Even the small acts, like for example, even just take a thought in your mind, fill your mind with love, feel, feel yourself in love and just send a compassionate thought to all beings, right? May their suffering, may they be free from suffering, may they be, may they come in peace. Just that small act, this will not like dramatically change the world, but this will change you, this will change me, right? So this small, small act, a smile, a small thing as, as, as such as a smile, but it can change someone's world, right? So a small gesture, some small thank you or some something what you can say, and change someone else's entire state of mind, right? Okay, verse number 123 says, Buddha says, As a rich merchant traveling alone avoids dangerous roads, as a lover of life avoids poison, let everyone avoid dangerous deeds. So Buddha gives the analogy of a rich person traveling alone. He will avoid roads which are, you know, uh, uninhabited or, you know, uh, so, and a lover of life, a person who loves life, avoids poison, any form of poison. So, we should also avoid dangerous deeds, wrong deeds. 124-125 Buddha says, If you have no wound on your hand, you can touch poison without being harmed. No harm comes to those 
who do not harm if you harm a pure and innocent person you harm yourself as dust thrown against the wind comes back to the thrower that means just be pure be good no one can harm you and for to a pure person if someone even wants to do any harm he will get harmed himself you know so it's like the boomerang right if you try to harm a pure person the harm will come back to that particular person right so just our focus is that we have to be pure right okay verse 126 some are born again those caught in evil ways go to a state of intense suffering those who have done good go to a state of joy but the pure in heart enter nirvana right so buddha compares right that some are born again that means those who are caught in evil ways go to the intense realms of suffering there are 31 realms of existence so they go in the state of intense suffering those who have done good from a egoic perspective right from the thing that i should get merit they go into the state of joy into the higher realms right and where there they extinguish their merit and they come back to the uh, normal human realm and but the pure in heart the person who is pure in heart and still in mind he or she attains nirvana so friends we all have our goal as nirvana so let us be pure let us make our mind pure and let us make our mind still right because that's the ultimate goal where we are trying to reach verse 127 and 128 not in the sky not in the ocean not in the mountain canyons is there a place anywhere in the world where a person can hide from his evil deeds not in the sky not in the ocean not in the mountain canyons is there a place where one can hide from death so important thing buddha is trying to say is that if you commit evil deeds wrong actions there is no place that can save you no place which can you know no place or you know some security that you can get you will have to face the impact of your evil actions of death illness old age these things happen and uh, evil deeds also whatever karmic repercussion will be there it has to come there will be no one can save you right so the importance again of karma of doing the right actions right deeds next uh, the section is on the punishment 129 onwards it's on punishment right so buddha says 129 uh, buddha says everyone fears punishment everyone fears death just as you do therefore do not kill or cause to kill everyone fears punishment everyone loves life as you do do not kill or cause to kill here buddha brings attention to the the precept number 1 no killing right do not kill every being every sentient being on this planet be it an insect to an animal to a human being everyone fears death even an insect fears death so we do not we do not have the right to halt a person's karmic journey right if we kill someone and the extended meaning of this is if we even have do cruelty to that particular uh, person or animal or insect we are creating karma for us so we need to be very careful not to do that again this goes back to the uh, noble eightfold path right action right not no killing no stealing no sexual misconduct all of that is also there con- covered in noble eightfold path okay verse number 131 132 if hoping to be happy you strike at others who also seek happiness you will be happy neither here not hereafter if hoping to be happy you do not strike at others who are also seeking happiness you will be happy here and here and hereafter right so here again striking harming in any way killing in any way buddha again stresses that if you want to be happy then and you harm others you will never be happy so be mindful in your actions your happiness should not be at the cost of the happiness of others by suffering others if we are creating happiness for ourselves this will create suffering for ourselves in the near or f- near future right so and again right livelihood as buddha says is one of the noble eightfold paths is that our livelihood that we practice should not be something that 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 
is earned uh, by creating suffering for others. The harm will come, right? So be, being mindful of that. 133-134 verse, right? Buddha says, Speak quietly to everyone and they too will be gentle in their speech. Harsh words hurt and come back to the speaker. If your mind is still like a broken gong, you have entered nirvana, leaving all quarrels behind you. How beautiful is this? Right? So again, multiple lessons here. Buddha says, it's, one is about the speech thing that Buddha is saying, speak quietly, speak lightly, travel light on this planet. What I get from Buddha's teachings here is that travel light, don't keep, don't have hatred towards us. This is all our natural tendencies to hold grudges, hatred against people. Travel light, don't have hatred, just let go, forgive, be gentle in speech. Buddha says, if you are gentle in your right, this is again going back to right speech. One of the eight parts of the Noble Eightfold Path. So how important is this? Right speech. Speak quietly, lovingly, gently to other people and they too will be gentle. So this, what I understand from this is that everyone, everyone in this world, this entire world is basically our mirror, right? So what I have observed in my spiritual journey also is that as my internal things changed, as my ego broke, right? Because of certain life events, things that I was holding on to, I I started letting go. Then people around me also became easy to deal with. People otherwise, they were very rigid and I used to encounter, because there was a lot of anger that is there uh, inside me. Uh, uh, so I was finding people, people who were very angry. They triggered anger in me. As in my spiritual journey, I started to let go and I started to be cool and relaxed. I saw people also, you know, I found... People very calm and relaxed. So everything is just a mirror. What we see outside is just a mirror. So Buddha is like saying that only that they too will be gentle in their speech. Harsh words. So if we say harsh words, they hurt and they will. So it's like said that the words harm more than even weapons. Weapon, the, the wound will, will heal in a few months. But harsh words, the wound will stay even years and decades and the person will can even take it to his grave right so being careful in in our speech then buddha says if your mind is still like a broken gong broken gong there's no voice no sound mind is still you have entered nirvana what else is there to ask the mind is still there is no thought you have entered nirvana leaving all the quarrels where are the quarrels is it with other people that we have or is it in our mind? It's actually in our mind. That bothers us more than our quarrels with the other person. The quarrels with the other person maybe is like 10-15 minutes in a day. But the quarrel that is going on in our mind that is like 24 hours or maybe more or 12-15 hours that we are awake. So when our mind becomes still, calm, the quarrels inside us, the, the conflicts, that are inside us. In Hindi, it is called the word used is Dwandu. If that conflict is subsided, then Nirvana, peace, right? What else is required, right? It's a beautiful thing. Just making our, trying to make, so let's reflect. I mean, we can all reflect from these in our life, what is our priority? Okay, 135, 136. As a cowherd with, with his staff, drives cows to the fresh fields. Old age and death lead all creatures to new, new lives. The selfish doing harm do not know what is in store for them. They are burned as if by fire by the results of their own deeds. So again, Buddha uses the analogy of a cowherd who dr drives the cows to a new field for grazing. Similarly, friends, our karmas, whatever karmic structure that we have, that nudges us I am a past life regression therapy expert also. So this is my understanding in, in looking at various cases on past lives and everything is that our karmas nudge ourselves to seek a new life which suits our karmic structure and how we can extinguish our karmas. Right? So if, if we have done bad karmas, so we create a life, create a drama around us, create an illusion for us where we experience sorrow and we experience the results of our karma and 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 which which hopefully creates compassion in us right so selfish who 
okay selfish people people who do harm they do not know what is in store for them so what my my learning here is what my understanding here is that till the time person does the wrong karma he doesn't know what, what the you know he, it it feels sweet for him because it gives him money by pleasure power sex all these things person gets material pleasures but once he dies he realizes immediately the realization strikes that what he has done he has you know where he is going to go and that actually prevents many souls from leaving this plane and and they get stuck in an astral astral plane or in this earth only because they know that either they have a very strong attachment to those things uh, to which they were indulged in the material pleasures or they are very they are very clear that when they go they will end up in some hellish realms right so when we know all these things when we are conscious enough to know these things then we need to resist from any wrong action even the minutest wrong action right okay verse 137 1 137 138 139 they are all linked right if one harms the innocent suffering will come in these 10 ways okay this they may suffer grief infirmity painful accident serious illness loss of mind legal prosecution fearful acquisition family bereavement or financial loss or their house may burn and after that they may be thrown into the fire of suffering right so these are the 10 ways a person a one who harms the innocent will suffer grief infirmity accident illness legal prosecution all these are the karmic consequences of hurting harming anyone and after that they will be they may be thrown into the fire of suffering so desisting from harming anyone any innocent person 141 uh, 142 verse 141 142 this is beautiful right this is so motivating and encouraging um, buddha says going about with matted hair without food or bath sleeping on the ground and smeared smeared with dust or sitting motionless no amount of penance can help a person whose mind is not purified but those whose mind is serene and chaste whose senses are controlled and whose life is non violent these are true brahmins true monks even if they wear fine clothes this is how beautiful so friends even though we may have an aspiration that as a lay person we cannot in this life become a monk but still we can live like a monk if we live in purity in purity of mind and uh, uh, total non violence our senses in control then even even if we are wearing normal clothes like lay people we we are as as good as monks right so if focus should be on right action right the noble eightfold path right focus on do, be doing purifying our mind by following the noble eightfold path rather than just being a monk and getting dressed and living uh, like a monk and then leaving the family for the forest and all those things okay 143 144 as a well trained horse needs no whip a well trained mind needs no prodding from the world to be good be like a well trained horse swift and spirited and go beyond sorrow through faith meditation and energetic practice of the dharma right so buddha gives analogy of okay so i am i am by mistake because the verses are so good i have actually crossed i should have taken till 140 so uh, so let's cover this one so as a well trained horse to so buddha compares this with uh, being a well trained horse he doesn't need a whip they are trained right so we have to be also energetically moving ourselves in the right direction in the practice in the energetic practice of dharma being motivated and what can keep us motivated is the community the sangha right so that's why buddha we we seek refuge in three things we seek refuge in the buddha we seek refuge in the dharma and we seek refuge in the sangha sangha is as important as the buddha right because the sangha is a community of people all of us you and me who are practicing the buddha's knowledge when we are in community it keeps us motivated so we can be like an energetic horse you know uh, a well trained horse on our path to uh, learning and practicing the dharma right 
right so it doesn't need a prodding from the world to be good so uh, so there should be no like asking for motivation from this world to be good and just we do the practice so this is it uh, 121 to 140 and i exceed it it went till 144 so uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, uh, do share your perspectives your thoughts your views in the comment section i will be very keen to uh, know about them and uh, thank you so much for watching namo buddhaye namo buddhaye